Well, hello everyone again. This is uh, Marijuana Resolve on BCTV. Uh, today is January 17th, 2011, and welcome to the show. Uh, today we have, as Daryl and I, as our guest today, uh, is Eric Lineback, who is the treasurer of Vote Hemp. Um, and he's here today to uh, talk to you folks about uh, hemp in, uh, in, uh, in general, uh, and specifically in Vermont, of course. And, we, uh, and we'd like you all to, to welcome Eric. Eric, why don't you uh, give us some idea of what, uh, what you think you would talk, cover today uh, for this? I mean, uh, is, it, is it really just general, or can we get some specific information out of you? We, we can talk about whatever you'd like. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if uh, you've heard from your readers uh, with specific questions or whatnot. Not but yet, but when our website is active, which we think will be soon, soon <laughs> if, hopefully next week, uh, we'll, uh, that we'll, we'll, and, and we're, going to, we're going to talk about having you back again anyway. So, sure. So, the, so basically the, the, uh, the camera, the floor, and the mics are yours. Okay. Well, I, I, I can start by, by giving a general introduction, and, and I'd love it you know, to uh, do some back and forth. We again, will jump in, yes. I'm sure you've heard from your, your viewers and, and uh, right. others involved with Marijuana Resolve, so yes. I'm here to answer your questions and okay. explain things and uh, talk about what we hope the future brings. Well, uh, one thing you could do is start by telling us a little something about Vote Hemp. Sure. How it got, how, you know, how long it's been around uh, and things like that. Could you do that? Absolutely. Okay, so, yep. Good. So, I, I, I'm one of the original co-founders of Vote Hemp. That actually is uh, a sister organization to uh, uh, a group called the Hemp Industries Association. The HIA was started back in the early 90s as a, a trade group for the emerging hemp industry uh, at the time, and they're still around. And we realized at some point that we needed a, um, uh, a lobbying arm, a, a group focused more specifically on getting the laws changed, uh, whereas HIA was more of a trade group. Um, so uh, myself and a couple other folks at the HIA, Hemp Industries Association, uh, started Vote Hemp with that in mind, to, to focus on lobbying, educating consumers, legislators, um, uh, and, and... So you're one of the original founders. Yeah, then. so, so we, we started the group in the spring of 2000. Um, so we, we just, I guess, celebrated our, our 10-year anniversary, yeah. which, uh, frankly, we were hoping not to celebrate uh, because our purpose is to get the laws changed so that uh, farmers can once again grow hemp in this country. So are you, uh, are you in the business to put yourself out of business? E exactly. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Right. Well, we, that's why we, we form Marijuana doing. Resolve it, yeah, yeah. is to put ourselves out of business. That's right. We, we would love nothing more than to put ourselves well, out of business. That's wonderful. Uh, Great. It, and, and, it's, and it's funny, a little, si little side story. When I <laughs> first got involved in hemp was in the, the mid-90s, uh, about 96, I started a an online uh, hemp industry portal um, to, to just get information out there, help, help the, the industry grow, help people connect with news and information and find products, et cetera. Um, and I remember publishing on our website when we started that, that we, we expected to see hemp legal in this country in, in 2001, because mm -hmm. uh, this is about 96. We figured five years, you know, we'll just get the information out there. Uh, once you know, because it's sort of no one of the, brainer it's a no brainer. It's it's one of those things where yeah. where the light bulb comes on. You know, you yeah. read you read a little bit, you learn a little bit. The light bulb comes on. You're like, oh my, you know, my God, this is incredible. How can this not be legal? You know. how, how can we're not growing this? We're not taking advantage of this. <laughs> and over the years, we kept pushing that. You know, okay, 2001. No, no, it'll be 2002, 2005. You know, and here we are in 2011 now. And so I've no been closer. <laughs> yeah, and I and I've been personally wor working on this issue. Uh, you know, for, for 15, you know, coming up on 15 years now. Vote Hemp has specifically been doing this for over 10 years. Well, would you say then that the resistance really <clears throat> is two main things, the legislatures who have not caught on and the, and the obstruction by the Drug Enforcement Administration? Yeah. Uh, is that a fair uh, that, that's fair. accusation? <laughs> right. Okay. And, and I would say it, it's more so not so much the legislators as it is the system. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're one-on-one -on -one with a legislator, uh, you, you can connect with them. You see their light, light bulbs flashing and as, as they learn about this. Now, this, of course, there are some exceptions. There are legislators who are, uh, you know, drug warriors. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just, they're, they don't, they, 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 you know, they're not going to hear any, anything. That right. doesn't matter you don't what, even have to waste your time talking to them. That's right. It, it, you know, it doesn't matter what you tell them, what facts you present, 
what no. the history is. It's just it either doesn't go in the ear or it goes in one and out the other. Or they just don't care. Or they just don't care. Their opinion uh, is their opinion, and nothing's going right. to change that opinion. Now, luckily, that's that's uh, not the majority. That that's the exception. Uh, but it's the system. It, you know, it, it's 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 a hot potato issue. A lot of a lot of legislators don't want to be to have their name attached to it. I mean, you know, any any kind of drug reform, as as you guys are aware. It's the same problem. Well, and then tell our viewers about the hot issue when, in fact, hemp, as you will tell us, is not a drug. Right. Um, so the hot right. issue really isn't hemp at all. It's marijuana, which is it true that some people get the two terms confused? Yeah. Let me, so let, 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 me, let me talk a little bit about what hemp is uh, for, for those who, who may or may not know. Um, best way to, to, to explain it is hemp is like, l l let's talk about dogs. Any, any, uh, plant or animal you have you have breeds those breeds are can be very different uh, a german shepherd and a poodle both both dogs but both extremely different looking and acting dogs uh, hemp and marijuana are both species or, or 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 i'm sorry both breeds or varieties of the same species of plant which is a cannabis sativa plant so they're they're connected there's no way to you know to, 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 to separate them and so that's why the hemp issue is inextricable from the marijuana issue um, now vote hemp we we are focused on on industrial hemp and, and and you know we we don't you know we we try to separate that now there are those who say you shouldn't separate the issues you can't separate the issues um, but we we've de we determined early on that our strategy was was to separate the yeah, issues, which I think is a s smart strategy and the way to go because yep. the fact they are so different. But That's it's right. a smart strategy that's been working for uh, eleven years, but also not necessarily that effective too. So it's uh, the strategy as, as as I've talked to you about. We we may need to change somewhere down the point. Well, but there, anyway, but yeah, the, there there are plenty of groups working on on both issues together uh, or, or separately. Is, in fact, yeah. And you, you are one, yes, uh, yes. you know, uh, National Organization to Reform the Marijuana Laws, Normal is another, yes, uh, right. Mar Marijuana Policy Project, MPP. Exactly. All of these groups are, are In some started way all, as... Yes, as marijuana, but we, but we realize the value of uh, not tying them together, but in fact helping to point out why they're different. Right. Uh, and should be treated legislatively in very different ways, no matter what right. the DEA says. And as you pointed out, it's, it's uh, you can't the reason that we've had these issues with getting hemp legalized in this country is because it's it's tied inextricable. In. It's tied into the drug issue. And that's why I don't have a problem separating it. Mm -hmm. Let it be right. its own thing. Get that one taken care of first. Right. One of the reasons I'm a big hemp supporter is it is you know we talk about fuels and stuff. An acre of corn, an acre of hemp, mm -hmm. seven times greater than what corn can produce, mm -hmm. which I know you know. But I don't know if they know. Right. I mean, there's so many other things that hemp can do for our economy and so many other things. And we got all these people that are just stuck on the drug part. Right. Okay. Right. We'll get you out of there. Stop thinking about the drug part. Let's think about the economic part. Let's That's think right. about the good, the clothing. You know, you know we got to save the corporations from ourselves. The store sells all sorts of hemp products. Right. Right. right here on Main Street. I'm, I'm wearing we some, some pants that the viewers right. can't see. You're wearing. But I, I'm wearing but pants that I that I got this here locally at, at yeah. Save the Corporations. Yeah. And by the it, way, as you know, in order for them to get that clothing, those those items are imported. That's they're right. not. They're not from a. That's they're right. not from well, Vermont or, farmers. Or, or at least the, the, the material is. That, is that's imported. what I mean. Is is the, the, is, right. is imported. Uh, well, they get the material, and then what they what so vote so the uh, so the save the corporation would have clothing and things like that. So the people who make the clothing can import the material to make the pants and the things like that. That's right. Or, or technically, could, if they wanted to, and no no one does this, but but if they wanted to, they could import the yarn or the, you know the the they could make the textiles here. But but you know the raw material. The, right. The, is the, from. It's just crazy. Tell us some of the countries that we have to import hemp from. Well, primarily, uh, the hemp in this country comes from, if, if we're talking food, so seed, okay. nut, oil, okay. it, it's mostly Canada. Okay. And, if, and if we're talking textiles, it's mo nowadays it's mostly China. Um, China. E e Eastern, Eastern Europe as well, um, Romania, Hungary, 
Poland to some extent, um, but they, the, you know, the, those are cultures that have gone, that, that have worked with this material for thousands of years. Right. It's, it's a tough material to work with. It, it's, it's, it's a very durable, tough fiber. Right. And uh, a lot of people have found when they try to run it through a, a textile uh, machine or a knitting machine that it breaks the needles or it breaks the right. machine. A lot of farmers harvesting it in the fields have found that the traditional machinery uh, it, it gets caught up. It gets it it, 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 it breaks the machinery. It gets it, it jammed up. It's a really tough, tough plant and a tough fiber. Uh, Which is so another good thing, though, because great, it, another great it, thing. It, it's durable, it is a right. durable <coughs> plant. All right. I, All right. So you can't. So you. So so you have. You have to have specialized machinery. You can't just you know plug it into the existing so system. So if our but, uh, if our farmers here in Vermont were able to uh, grow hemp as a as a farming product. Um, would would they they would benefit by by uh, by uh, in, in terms of American uh, usage? Would our farmers be able to export it as well? Would it, would that be a value in us? Uh, lo for instance, they can't make money from hemp because they're not allowed to grow it in Vermont. But if they were, we certainly would make we we wouldn't have to import it from China for one thing. Right, and, and I think places. that's wrong too. Excuse me, but uh, and you'll know better. We d I thought we passed a law in Vermont where you could grow hemp. It's just that we, we don't have anybody doing it yet because of the federal no, law. No, you don't have the, that's, uh, the, the provisions. That's, all, that's, that's, right. that's almost uh, uh, right. The, the, we, we passed a law, 2008. Yeah. The, the, uh, the thing is, though, it hasn't, the law is, is in effect except for the section of the law that allows the Secretary of Agriculture to promulgate rules, to, to, to put the rules together and put them out there so that farmers can then go through the process right. of getting licensed. That hasn't happened yet. So technically, if a farmer said, I want to grow hemp and I'm going to go apply for a license, uh, there would be no process in place no yet to do that. Uh, what that's waiting on, and the way the law was written here in Vermont, is for the federal government to do something. Because right now there's this conflict between state laws, and, and Vermont is not the only state to right, have there done are this, seven of them, there, right? there there are nine states nine. that have passed laws uh, allowing the production of, Vermont, of, of uh, hemp for research or or other purposes. Where are they? Do you uh, well, I'm going to read from my list here because okay, I don't want yeah, I don't want to mess this up. New Englanders or what? But, well, it, and we, we do share we do uh, do share this with some other New England states, uh, but but the list uh, and I'll just run through this quickly. So there there are 28 states total that have actually introduced hemp legislation <coughs> on the state oh, level. That's good. Uh, 17 of those have actually passed legislation. Wow. So, you know, we have roughly, uh, what's that, a third, you know, roughly right. one third right. of our s states in this country have, have, have passed hemp legislation. Uh, now, nine, and I'll read the list here, Hawaii, Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Montana, North Dakota, Oregon, Vermont, and West Virginia uh, have all allowed hemp production. Now that doesn't mean they're all, they all have rules in place and, and farmers can get licensed. In fact, uh, one of the few states, uh, that, that Montana and North Dakota, I believe are the only ones that actually have, have rules in, uh, in place and, and, and you know, a process for a farmer to, to actually apply for a permit. Um, and, and of those states, Maine, Montana, North Dakota, Oregon, Vermont, and West Virginia are the ones that have legalized it for, for production. Uh, the others um, have legalized it just for research purposes. So that's, uh, th you know, that, that's, and, and that's all happened over the last, well, for the most part, last 10 years. Um, th there, there was some activity starting in, in, in the 90s. But, uh, so, so we have states that <laughs> and legislatures pass, uh, th th that, that the state can grow hemp, but they don't have the provision and, the, and all of the specifications in place in order to right. act on it. So nobody can really act on it so, except for the, the so state that So there's this mentioned. discrepancy between federal law and state law. And let's take, let's take North Dakota, because North Dakota has been one of the most progressive states on this issue. Uh, and part of the reason for that is they, they're right there next to Canada. Their yeah. farmers can literally look across the border and see hemp being grown, uh -huh. and they oh, can see right. trucks you know, bringing right. hemp materials oh, yeah. and products into the United States right. right past their farms, right. but they can't grow it. So this has a spe sort of a special meaning for them. You know, Vermont's the same way. I mean, we border uh, Canada as well. Um, but the, so North Dakota has put, put rules in place. They've actually created a licensing system for farmers. And, and there have been a couple farmers who have, are, are testing the system, and they've applied for and received uh, the state licenses. 
Now, an interesting side note is North Dakota originally, like Vermont, had written into their law that in order to grow hemp, you not only had to be licensed by the state, you also had to get a permit, the proper licensing from the DEA, from the federal government. Uh -huh. right. After finding out very quickly that the DEA was not going to be cooperative, right, exactly. they rewrote the law to exclude that and right. just say, you know, we'll license you as a state. You don't need that federal Legislators uh, license. Legislators in Vermont and Montpelier, mm -hmm. are you paying attention? So, so and we'll, we'll get into this later because that, that's, <laughs> when we talk specifically about Vermont and what, what, our, what the future right. of hemp is here, Excellent. There, there are a couple ways we can, we can get things moving. Because, you know, we're ahead of most states. We've passed a law, but we're mm -hmm. stalled because, you know, we, right. we're basically waiting for the federal government to change uh, their perspective. And, and the reason that's an issue is because technically, let's say a North Dakota farmer who has been licensed and has the proper permit to grow hemp plants that seed, the feds can come in and basically wipe them out based on the drug laws as they exist can wipe them out. They can yeah, literally they can seize over. the farm. And can't they also arrest the people who are doing that as well? So they, 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 they face prosecution, they face asset forfeiture, and, right. and no farmer is going to Put, put the farm at risk, uh, so to, to speak. To, Especially to, when they're just barely making men's eat. As you know, it is, right. Men's meat now. Ex right. Exactly. So, so, it, so it, it, they're stuck as well. Now, now those farmers, uh, these two farmers in North Dakota, have actually sued the federal government and uh, taken that through the, through the courts. It, they, they lost the case. It was appealed. They lost the appeal. We won't, we won't get into the details of that now. And you can go to votehemp.com. We have all of this information, all of the the legislative and uh, legal uh, history um, of hemp in the states there. And you can look at these various lawsuits. There have been several uh, dealing with this issue. Uh, so so they're, sort of, they're sort of stuck as well. And, you know, what it might take is a farmer in a state like Vermont, well, not quite yet because, again, Vermont's not, not issuing permits, but in a state like North Dakota, that farmer may get that permit and decide, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test the system. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant that hemp, and we'll see what happens. And then, you know, very likely the, f the federal government is going to swoop in and, and, and stop that activity, possibly prosecute, but that will then set up the potential for a lawsuit. It, you know, it may take that step, and it may take a farmer willing to do that to, to get these things clarified. So who we refer to as a sacrificial yeah. lamb yeah. who, is, uh, who yeah. would do that, right? That's right, and a lot of times you need, you need to create that situation where somebody is being prosecuted right. in order to to pursue the legal right. uh, route that you know that to get to get that law. Can I ask a quick question here? Mm -hmm. Why be, do we do f American farmers need a license to grow corn? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I, right. I'm I, not really other other than 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 what would be considered uh, would it, it would illegal be, drugs or controlled substances. Right. You can make a whiskey out of corn. Why is why why don't right. farmers uh, who grow corn have to be licensed? Uh, right. a part of the problem here that you seem to be identifying is the fact that we need that f f farmers need to be licensed to grow a plant that is not psychoactive. Right. Why well, is that? Well, the reason for the licensing is probably they could keep track of you. Well, exactly. <laughs> they want to know who's doing what. Now, you, now you, you just made a point I want to I want to touch on, and that is it's not psychoactive. Excuse me. We again, you know, hemp, industrial hemp. Marijuana, both cannabis, uh, very different breeds. Now, marijuana has been bred over thousands of years for its psychoactive qualities. Hemp has been bred over thousands of years for its other qualities, for the production of fiber, for the production of uh, oil, of, of seed mm -hmm. for food or oil, etc. Uh, so these, you know, over thousands of years, and, and the first documented use of hemp, I think, goes back to about 10,000 B.C., it may have been used before that, but that's the first document. They've actually found hemp seeds, hemp products that date back that far. So thousands of years this plant has been used by, by cultures, by, by humans, and it's been bred for these different qualities. So now, today, after all of this breeding, we have plants that we call hemp that have very little. Now, there is detectable THC, and THC, by the way, is, is the, the psychoactive component of, of uh, cannabis. So marijuana, as, as a drug, has, has a higher percentage of THC, anywhere from a few percent up to you know, 20, 20, 30 percent even uh, nowadays, uh, whereas hemp has less than 1 percent. And <coughs> most, in most cases, uh, the laws are written to define industrial hemp as having less than 0.3 percent. That's the way Canada did it. That's the way Vermont wrote it into their law. 
Um, that varies uh, across some states, some countries, but, but that's, that seems to be about it. So it's basically that's how you define hemp. Hemp is defined as the cannabis sativa plant that has a THC content less than whatever percent. You know? So if you tried to smoke hemp, it'd be like smoking cardboard or something. It would like pretty yeah. It would it would pretty you, basically the, the 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 simple statement to clarify anyone who I thinks see. you can smoke the pants you're wearing or the <laughs> right, right. you know the, the paper you might be writing on this anything made out of hemp right. is is it will not get you high. It doesn't matter how you know you hear yeah, people say you, you'd have to smoke a joint the size of a telephone pole. Yeah. But the point is you can't smoke a joint of any size. And get high right. from, from, from hemp. Right, you'd get exactly. nothing but a headache and, and, right. a, and very very sore lungs. That's fascinating. Uh, so, right. it's uh, it, it, it it's not a drug. Hemp is not a drug. Now, right. and a good a good analogy here is is uh, the poppy plant. The, the way the laws were written in this country, most people may or may not know, op opium uh, comes from the poppy plant. Uh, they 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 slice the, the flowers and there's a, a sap or a um, the oil that, that, that drips out and they refine that and, and that's, that's, that's opium. That's where heroin comes from, that's where a lot of our, our uh, pharmaceutical narcotics uh, uh, come from, morphine for example. Mm -hmm. But you can you know, walk down the street and your neighbor might be growing a bunch of ornamental poppy plants. So the laws have been written to account for this. You know, it's not a black or white thing. It's, oh, oh it's a poppy plant, heroin comes from poppy, therefore poppy is, yeah. is illegal. They, they've, you know, and, and you know, we, we may eat a bagel or a muffin that, that has poppy, poppy seeds. seeds. Those poppy seeds have trace amounts of opiates in them. There right. is actually a very small amount of that drug getting into your body, but it's so right. minuscule, right. you could never eat enough poppy seed bagels to, to, to get high. Uh, same it might mess up no, the there's going to be a rush at Brugger's now. <laughs> <laughs> you listening, Brugger's? Actually, but 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 would it I also? I want the poppy seed. One. I just want to spread marijuana resolve, man. I, I, I gotta my have poppy. my poppy seed. <laughs> um, but, but but that's true. But people don't. You know, that was a very good. Can analogy. can poppy <laughs> seeds mess up your a, a drug test? Yes. Right. So so, right, okay. so so there there's a threshold. You if you happen to eat a lot of poppy seeds and you have a drug test uh, the next day or week, yeah. you, may, you may test positive. That's now, right. wh what they've done to deal with this problem is they've raised the thresholds of the tests to account for that. And they've said, okay, you know, no one could possibly eat this many poppy seeds or this many poppy yeah. seed bagels you know, to, get, to, get, uh, to, to register positive, uh, you know, what would be called a false positive on a drug test. Um, if we set the limit at this point as far as the test goes. Okay, you know, if it's above that, you're positive. If it's below that, you're, you're negative. Um, whereas if you were to be a opiate user, you, you, know, you, you're, you would register somewhat higher than that. And, you know, so there's that threshold can be changed. And interesting, and, and again, you, you can re, uh, read about the history of this on, on our website, votehemp.com, but the, we had what we call the, the hemp food fight that we engaged in. I say we as an industry, and, and, and the HIA actually was the organization that filed the lawsuit ultimately. Now, HIA, HIA is who again? The, the uh, Hemp Industries Association. Okay. So uh, this is back back uh, in in uh, you know the early 2000s. Um, the DEA uh, did what what's called uh, an, an, a rule interpretation, and they went and looked at the Controlled Substances Act, and they revisited uh, what they reinterpreted what that means or what that meant at the time for their rulemaking. Uh, they and, and determined that. This is right when hemp was taking the, the hemp industry was taking off, uh, and 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 so that you know it was now on their radar screen. Oh, we got to we got to do something about this. They basically said um, anything that results in in THC of any amount going into your body is is considered marijuana, is considered a drug, and will be illegal. So they they were clarifying this in their rules. Now the industry became aware of this, and they have to go through a a, a, a public comment period and whatnot. We we you know, pursued this uh, and, and ultimately sued, sued uh, the Justice Department, the DEA, uh, about this. They, they hadn't followed the, the rulemaking uh, procedures properly. We, we had a bunch of technical grounds, uh, but, but ultimately it, they, they, that, that all got squashed. So they were, they, they were not able to reinterpret the rules because again, let, let's, you know, foods would have been no more. Right now, you can go go to your local health food store. You can get hemp milk. You can get hemp uh, cereal, bread, protein powder. Right, any, anything you can make out of soy, you know, any other bean, seed, or nut, like like a, a you know milk beverage substitute, right. milk substitute, um, you know baked baked goods, etc. 
um, hemp, hemp is wonderful and it's an incredibly nutritious uh, um, seed and oil. And so that, that, that would not have existed. You, you, we would have no hemp foods in this country if the DEA had gotten their See, way. See, and that's, that, it, to me, you know, like you were saying at the beginning how, you know, some people get it, they all of a sudden the, the light goes off in their head and some people don't even want to hear it. And that's fine. The people that don't want to hear and stuff, fine, go in your corner, stay there, that's fine. But for everybody else, Come on, <laughs> come on. We yeah. can help Vermont farmers. We can help our economy. We can grow jobs, all sorts of them. This is a, and, and now can you give a little, and I don't know how much of it you know, are you, uh, do you know the history of how it all became illegal somewhat? Well, that, we, we, I mean, because I wouldn't we, mind we, just touching, I've done it a couple times on the show, sure. but I mean, well, that was done by rich people. Yeah, we, we, okay. we could do a whole show, uh, as we you know, on, on this, this subject. Um, but in a nutshell, the, uh, uh, in a hemp nutshell, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the story is this. It, it, hemp was legal in this country until 1937. Um, the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 was passed. And there's all sorts of conspiracy theories about this, and, and it's, it's sort of a f it's, it's fun to research this and, and, and learn about it. And you, know, you can take those theories as far as you want. But the fact is, there were a handful of, of industrialists, wealthy individuals, um, and, and uh, forestry products, paper products, uh, pharmaceuticals, oil industry, uh, synthetic fiber, etc. Basically, all of the industries that would ultimately be threatened by hemp as a raw material, fiber like hemp. biomass, oil, right. you know, um, medicine, right. etc. So, so the conspiracy theories go that you know these folks got together and they plotted and got this. Which I believe ultimately, on, ultimately got this this law passed. Yeah, I'm one of the conspiracy theory guys. I uh, believe it. Um, I, I have to say, I you know, I, I, I there's there is a a good amount of truth to that. Well, um, for for our, our our listeners, I'd like to not to correct you guys, but I'm a hemp theorist. <laughs> I do not conspire for anything. If <laughs> we're going to talk about hemp. We're going to talk about it with what we know to the best of our ability, and that is not conspiracy. We will give you the information, the facts as best as we can, and that's why we're here today. We hope you enjoyed this part of the show. Stay tuned, folks. There's going to be part two, which is going to run next week, right here with the rest of us. So, actually, you can you can take a little break from the TV because we're not going to come on because again until next week. <laughs> but. Uh, Part two will be next week. So I guess... Uh, so Eric Lineback <laughs> will be returning, what folks. A, and we ending? will continue the, uh, <laughs> the hemp show. Uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs> and please come back and see Eric in part two. Yeah. Thank you.